A top Russian defense official has attended China's premier military showcase in a show of unity between the countries as Russia continues its military operation in Ukraine. Sergei Shoigu, secretary of the Russian Federation Security Council, was in the southern city of Zhuhai to view Chinese and Russian aircraft and other military hardware on Thursday. They included Chinese J-22 and J-35A stealth fighters that China says are rivals to the latest U.S. jets in the same class. Shoigu, a former defense minister, appeared to be on a mission to reaffirm ties between the countries as Russia's Operation Ukraine has largely stalemated and Moscow has turned to North Korean soldiers to boost its troop numbers. China is not known to have directly provided military support to Russia but has sold a dual-use technologies that could boost its ability to attack Ukrainian targets. China is also a major customer of Russian oil and gas amid international sanctions blocking Russia's access to global financial markets. Weeks before the start of the military operation in Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Beijing and the side signed a lengthy cooperation agreement pledging an unlimited partnership. The countries have held several joint military exercises and aligned their foreign policies to challenge the U.S.-led liberal Western order. President Joe Biden hosted Indonesia's new president on Tuesday for a White House visit as the U.S. leader ramps up a busy stretch of international diplomacy all while global leaders are turning their attention to what comes next with President-elect Donald Trump set to return to office in just over two months. I am proud that the partnership between our countries is stronger than it's ever been, said Biden as he welcomed President Prabowo Subianto, who was inaugurated last month, to the Oval Office. Biden earlier on Tuesday met with Israeli President Isaac Herzog for talks about about the conflicts in Gaza and Lebanon. And Biden on Thursday will set off for a six-day visit to Peru and Brazil for two international summits, which will offer the outgoing president one of his last chances as president to meet with heads of state he's worked with over the years. But even as Biden attempts to put the focus on U.S. foreign policy in his final months in office, much of the world has turned its attention to Trump and trying to get a bead on his plans. Trump on the campaign trail pledged to take sweeping action once he returns to office that would cause ripples across the globe. The incoming president's promises include ordering the mass deportation of migrants, slapping significant tariffs on imported goods, and settling the war between Russia and Ukraine. Before meeting Biden, Subianto on Monday made a congratulatory call to Trump, which was recorded and published on the Indonesian leader's social media channels. During the call, the Indonesian leader and Trump were effusive, with Subianto expressing shock over the July assassination attempt on Trump at a campaign rally and relief that the Almighty protected the president. 
Subianto like many world leaders is hoping to get face time with Trump and offered to meet with the president-elect in person. The Indonesian leader's Washington visit was his second stop in a five-country tour. Before heading to Washington, Subianto traveled to Beijing to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping for his first international visit of his presidency. Like Biden, he'll makes his way to Lima, Peru, for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit later this week, and then head to Rio de Janeiro for the Group of 20 Leaders Summit. Subianto's ending his whirlwind trip with a visit to Britain to meet Prime Minister Keir Starmer before returning to Jakarta. Well, Mr. President, welcome to the White House. Thank you very much, sir. Good to have you here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. For marking an important anniversary, 75 years of diplomatic relationship with Indonesia and the United States. 75 years. I'm proud that the partnership between our countries is stronger than it's ever been. And today we're going to discuss how we continue to strengthen that partnership. First, in my view, by advancing free and open Indo-Pacific with ASEAN at its center. As two of the largest democracies in the world, it seems to me our nations have a special responsibility uh, in this vision. Second, fighting the climate crisis. Indonesia is a critical player in the clean energy transition. And third, by building a secure and resilient supply chain. And finally, by deepening our comprehensive strategic partnership that includes deepening our security cooperation. We'll discuss also global challenges, including the Gaza and the South China Sea. But, so, Mr. President, I'm looking forward to our discussion and welcome. We'd like to have you here. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, President Biden. Uh, thank you for receiving me. I also would like to thank you. You, you phoned me yourself uh, upon my election. And uh, great victory. Yes, thank you very much. And then uh, finally, I could make it, and you received me today. Uh, United States, for us, is a very a great friend. Uh, United States supported us in our struggle for independence and helped us many times in our time of need. Therefore, uh, I will work very hard to strengthen Indonesian-United States uh, relationship. And I would like to work uh, towards this end, that we have a strong uh, cooperation. Once again, uh, President Biden, thank you very much for uh, well, Thank you. Look forward to our discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.